You're watching Tag TV. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 4th of July. At least 13 including children killed after bus falls in gorge in India's Himachal Pradesh. Pakistani struggle to buy sacrificial cattle for Eid amid raging inflation. And Taliban's Grand Assembly ends with calls for international recognition. And now for all the details. At least 13 people, including school children, were killed after a bus rolled off a gorge in Kullu district of India's Himachal Pradesh state on Monday. Rescue workers rushed to the spot and pulled out at least three injured persons from the mangled bus. A magisterial probe has been initiated into the incident. At least 13 people, including school children, were killed after a private bus fell into a gorge on Monday morning in Kullu district of India's northern Himachal Pradesh state. Rescue workers immediately rushed to the spot to pull out bodies and search for survivors from the mangled bus, which was carrying at least 20 school children. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed grief over the incident on Twitter and announced an ex-gratia of nearly $2,575 for the next of kin of the deceased and $643 for the injured. प्रशासन पहुंचा लेकिन थोड़ा रिमोट एरिया है दूर है ये और पहुंचने में थोड़ा विलंब हुआ और ऐसे में हमने मैजिस्ट्रियल इन्क्वारी के आदेश दे दिए हैं और मैजिस्ट्रियल इन्क्वारी के बाद जो फैक्ट्स आएंगे उसके आधार पर जो है आगामी कार्रवाई करें India has the world's deadliest roads, the result of a flood of untrained drivers, badly maintained highways and cars that fail modern crash tests. Enforcing road safety measures remains a huge problem, leading to one road accident every minute and a road accident death every four minutes in India. The that toll in a massive landslide at a railway construction site in Noni district of India's Manipur state increased to 42 on Monday, while such operations were underway amid hostile weather conditions to locate the missing. Indian Army personnel paid tribute to soldiers who died in the devastating landslide as immortal remains were sent to their respective hometowns. Indian Army personnel paid tribute to soldiers who died in the massive landslide that hit Noni town of northeastern Manipur state last week, killing at least 42 and injuring 18. The mortal remains of five army personnel, including a lieutenant colonel of the Territorial Army killed, were sent to their respective home stations on Monday by an Indian Air Force aircraft in Imphal. Bodies of the soldiers belonging to eastern Siliguri town, Imphal city and Agartala were brought to their respective hometowns, where a wreath-laying ceremony was held to mourn the loss. The bodies of Sanjay Devnath and Prashanta Dev were laid to rest amid a tearful adieu on Sunday. A huge crowd gathered on Sunday to pay last respects to 31-year-old Sanjay Orani, who hailed from Bagdogra area of Siliguri. The soldiers who lost their lives were deployed near Tupul railway station when the landslide hit. They were deployed for the protection of the under construction railway line from Jiribam to Imphal. Rescue workers had to battle heavy rains to pull out bodies and survivors last Thursday after the landslide occurred in the early hours at the railway construction site where the workers were sleeping in a makeshift camp. आज तक हमारा 14 हो गया कल 11 को हम लोग रिसीव किए थे आज तीन आया है दार्जिलिंग से एक कटिहार बिहार से एक और या इधर लोकल बागडोगरा एक एक है और सब को बरामद नहीं किया जा सका है वो धीरे-धीरे वो एक्सकेवेट हो रहा है तो बड़ा ही बड़ा दुर्घटना था Meanwhile search operations continued for the fifth consecutive day on Monday to find the missing personnel and civilians the through-wall radar system and rescue dogs are being deployed to hasten the search operation. 
Manipur, already reeling from the first landslide hit on the 29th of June, was hit by another landslide on July 1. This month, unprecedented rains lashed India's northeastern states and neighbouring Bangladesh, killing more than 150 people. Millions have also been displaced by the catastrophic floods in recent weeks and in some low-lying areas, houses have been submerged. In a major success, two most wanted LET lashkar e taiba terrorists were overpowered by villagers and handed over to the police in Riyasi district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir on Sunday. In an act of bravery, villagers overpowered two heavily armed LET lashkar e taiba terrorists in Riyasi district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir on Sunday and handed them over to police. Apprehended terrorists have been identified as Talib Hussein of Rajori and Faisal Ahmaddar of Pulwama. According to Jammu and Kashmir police, the terrorists had reached Tuksondhok village to take shelter after continuous pressure from police and army. Police said Talib Hussein was in constant touch with LET terrorist Qasim based in Pakistan and was involved in at least three cases of ID blast in Rajori district besides killings of civilians and grenade blasts. During preliminary questioning, it was revealed that both the terrorists were also in touch with the Pakistani LET handler Salman, who was continuously in touch with them. Police recovered two AK rifles, seven grenades, a pistol and a huge quantity of ammunition from their possession. In a Twitter post on Monday, the police said more recoveries were made from the terrorist hideout, which included sticky bombs and grenades. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha applauded the courage of villagers and announced cash rewards for them. However, a political slugfest erupted between the local units of ruling BJP, Bharatiya Janata Party and Congress after one of the captured terrorists, Talib Hussein, was reported to be a member of the former and charge of party's IT cell. The BJP has, however, refuted reports and termed it as fake. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa has issued fresh directions to key officials of the military and spy agency ISI to stay away from politics amid allegations of political engineering ahead of the upcoming bi-polls in Punjab province. A number of opposition PTI leaders have blamed military officials of manipulating the polls to disadvantage of the party. Pakistan's Chief of the Army Staff General Kamar Javed Bajwa has issued fresh directions to all his commanders and key officers, including those associated with spy agency ISI, the Inter-Services Intelligence, to stay away from politics and avoid interacting with politicians. This comes in the wake of allegations by leaders of opposition PTI party. PTI's Punjab President Dr. Yasmin Rashid has accused the ISI sector commander of Lahore of having been involved in political engineering to manipulate the upcoming by-elections in Punjab province to the disadvantage of PTI. Earlier, former Foreign Minister and PTI's Deputy Chairman Shah Mahmood Qureshi also alleged that some invisible forces are active to influence the by-elections against PTI and asked Election Commission to look into the matter. Pakistan's powerful military has directly ruled the country for almost half of its nearly 75-year history. Even during civilian rule, it dominates security and foreign policy. Although it denies interference in politics, reports suggest PTI Chairman Imran Khan was ousted from Prime Minister's post after he had lately lost support by the military. More news from Pakistan. Soaring inflation has left Pakistanis struggle to buy sacrificial cattle for the upcoming Eid al Adha festival. The country's inflation rate has hit a 13-year high at 31.3%. Livestock traders said transportation costs after frequent fuel price hikes were making the cattle even more expensive. Customers at the sprawling livestock market in Pakistan's Karachi city said over the weekend they were struggling to buy sacrificial cattle for the upcoming Eid al Adha festival amid skyrocketing prices after the country's inflation rate hit a 13 year high at 21.3%. A livestock trader said transportation costs were making the cattle even more expensive. 
fuel prices have risen about 90% since May end after the government scrapped costly fuel subsidies in a bid to cut its surging fiscal deficit and secure a resumption of an international monetary fund bailout program. उस रेंज में तो बहुत छोटा जानवर ही मिल रहा है जानवर सर इसलिए महंगा पीछे से ही महंगा मिला है ट्रांसपोर्ट और डीजल पेट्रोल महंगा होने की वजह से सब कुछ महंगा है देखें जानवर जो पिछले साल हमने 2 लाख 20000 का बेचा है वो अभी 4 लाख 20000 का बेच रहे हैं सिर्फ 2 लाख रुपए का इजाफा इसलिए क्योंकि महंगाई की वजह से Muslims in Pakistan will celebrate Eid al-Adha, one of the two most important festivals of the Islamic calendar on July 10th according to local media Animals such as cows, goats and camels are slaughtered to commemorate a sacrifice by the Prophet Ibrahim of his son on God's command. Moving on, residents in Pakistan administered Kashmir recently staged a demonstration against rising number of asphalt crushing plants in Muzaffarabad city which are causing respiratory diseases amongst the locals. They said people are falling sick due to dust and fume from the plants which are also polluting the environment. Residents in Pakistan administered Kashmir recently held a protest to demand closure of asphalt crushing plants in Muzaffarabad city which they claimed are polluting the environment and causing various respiratory and heart diseases amongst the local population. The protesters said these plants have almost reached 100 in number and are running without adopting safety measures and considering health hazards caused to the local residents. They said people are falling sick due to the dust and fume from these plants. They claim despite repeated requests, the Pakistan government is not paying any attention to them. हमारा धनी माय साहब हमें लोग बीमार हैं इसकी वजह से यहां पे एलर्जी के मरीज भी हैं टीबी के मरीज भी हैं दमा के मरीज हैं और ये सिर्फ और सिर्फ क्रश मिशनों की जो आलूदगी की वजह से और जो जहां से जो डस्ट फैलती है उसकी वजह से यहां पे लोग परेशान हैं लोकल्स इन पाकिस्तान एडमिनिस्ट्रेटेड कश्मीर हैव एक्सप्रेस देयर हेल्पलेसनेस ऑन अ नंबर ऑफ ओकेजंस इन द पास्ट दे क्लेम दैट गवर्नमेंट हैज रिपीटेडली टर्न्ड अ ब्लाइंड आई टू द प्रॉब्लम्स फेस्ड बाय द पीपल इन टेरिटरीज अंडर इट्स इलीगल ऑक्यूपेशन इन न्यूज़ फ्रॉम अफगानिस्तान a three-day Taliban run gathering of thousands of male religious and ethnic leaders ended on Saturday by asking foreign governments to formally recognize the administration, but made no signals of changes on international demands such as the opening of girls' high schools. The Afghan economy has plunged into crisis as Western governments have withdrawn funding and strictly enforced sanctions, saying the Taliban government needs to change course on human rights, especially those of women. The gathering's final statement said defense of the Islamic Emirate was obligatory and that the Islamic State militant group, which has said it was behind several attacks in the country, was illegal. It said it would not interfere with neighboring countries and they should not interfere in Afghanistan. The Jirga or Grand Assembly of Religious Scholars and Elders took place in the absence of women representatives. Reports suggest that according to some Afghan citizens, the essential problems faced by Afghans were not addressed in the resolutions issued by the major gatherings of the Islamic clerics. Residents claim that the gathering mostly benefited the Islamic Emirate. Sri Lanka is struggling to raise 587 million US dollars to pay off about half a dozen fuel shipments. Power and Energy Minister Kanchana Vijay Sekhara said on Sunday as the cash-strapped country tries to cope with a worsening financial crisis. Vijay Sekhara told reporters that new field shipments are being lined up but the country is struggling to raise enough funds to pay as the central bank can supply only about $125 million. Sri Lanka only has around 12,770 tons of diesel and 4,061 tons of petrol left in reserves, he said. Faced with severely limited diesel and petrol stocks, Sri Lanka last week closed schools, asked public employees to work from home and restricted government fuel supplies to essential services. The minister said the country will have to attempt to raise funds from the open market and seek more flexible payment options from suppliers.
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebookcom Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.